Hey, welcome back to another video. If you're new here, welcome to Mountain Label Music. As you can tell by the title of this video, we're gonna go through the step-by-step -step process of installing the Dadman software and the drivers that go along with using the Avid Matrix Studio, specifically in our instance for the Thunderbolt 3 card. In our scenario, since we are using a Thunderbolt 3 card, we're gonna have to install some drivers for both Windows and Mac OS. For most interfaces, you wouldn't have to do this because the core audio driver that's built in with Mac OS is typically compatible with every interface and it's got every driver known to man ready to go out the box. Unfortunately, with the Matrix Studio, there's a little extra step to configure the core audio options that are included for this card. And I guess you don't really have to install this, but there are a couple options that are really useful that might come in handy when setting up your interface. In my opinion, if you're gonna go with the Thunderbolt 3 option with the Avid Matrix, it's, it's good to have regardless. In our scenario right now, we're gonna be using Mac OS. First thing we're gonna do is go to the Avid website and log into our account with our registered devices. As far as I know, getting the software for your interface, the only way to go about it is making sure that you have a registered device. I'm sure there are other ways to get these files, but I highly recommend just registering your device with Avid and going through their process because they'll probably have the up-to-date info that you're gonna need with this software. We're gonna download both the Dadman installer and the Matrix Studio firmware which I'll tell you more about in a second, and the DAD Thunderbolt driver for core audio. We're gonna open up our files, ignore all of my extra files here. The first thing you would do is go ahead and install your DADman software. We're gonna double click on the zip file for the DADman Mac install, and it'll actually give us a package content here. It looks like I already did it once, I'm gonna delete this. But this version 5.7.0.1, I already have installed, so, I'm not going to show you guys how to install Mac OS programs, but you're just going to double click and then go through the process and follow the install wizard as it says on the screen. So I'm going to go back to the top of our files and I'm actually going to go ahead and update my Matrix Studio to the latest version of its firmware. I'm going to bring Dadman over here. This is what the software is going to look like once you have it installed. It might be a little different. I have some preset configurations that I already made for my Matrix. so. It's gonna look a little different. You might not have all of these faders. It may just be kind of blank without any extra settings configured. The main thing is you have the software installed and open. We're gonna go back to our downloads and double click on this firmware zip file. And that's gonna give us an all flash option right here. Looks like I already opened it at 1.2. So I'm gonna remove that second one and just use the first one that I had downloaded. I'm gonna go back into the Dadman software and we're gonna find our settings for devices. So that'll be under settings and device list, which is shift command L. We're gonna go to our matrix studio right here, which is already read via, I think the Dante network. So I don't have to connect. I haven't even configured it to be connected via Thunderbolt. I'm gonna right click. And I'm gonna go to firmware update. I'm gonna click on file since I already have the file downloaded. Go to my downloads and scroll until I find that file I had earlier. There it is. So I'm just gonna hit open. I'm gonna confirm the firmware change. I'm gonna hit yes. And I'm just gonna let it do its thing. All right, looks like we're almost finished with this. It looks like we need to restart our unit. We're just going to click yes and it's going to restart the unit. I also forgot to mention that it tells us our firmware version down at the bottom right corner. So we were at 1.1.1.6, I believe. I think that's the version we were on. So now when this updates, it should give us a different number being 1.1.3.1, I believe it was. So I'm just going to let it restart and do its own thing. And now that I've clicked on the unit, it does say CPU firmware 1.1.3.1. Haha, <laughs> I was right. So now that we got that in place, everything's up to date. Our Dadman software is good to go. Our interface is good to go. Now it's time to install the Thunderbolt Core audio settings device. So I'm going to close out of the device list. I'm going to go back to our finder window. I'm going to find Dad TP Drive Core Audio. 
I'm going to double click on it to open the zip file and it's going to give us a core audio package. So we're going to do the same thing as before and double click on it and we're going to go through the instructions and I actually don't have this. So we're, you're going to sit through this with me. You'll be okay. You got this. I believe in you. So it says the system extension is blocked, which means it's a new extension. It's a new software. And sometimes you kind of have to bypass this uh, because Apple doesn't allow those kinds of extensions to be ran on their program. So we're going to open system settings real quick. And it's we're just going to have to change one thing, which is click this button that allows the program from loading. And we're going to use our password. I'm just going to use my touch ID. And now if I close out of this system extension activated, the dad Thunderbolt system extension has been successfully activated. So we're going to hit OK and we're going to oh, restart my Mac. OK, I guess we're doing that. All right, we have just restarted our computer and now I'm going to go to our launch pad and find our dad core audio device. So that core audio device is actually called dad driver setup. So we're going to click on that and that's going to give us a little box, which allows us to select our interface that we are connected to being via Thunderbolt and the amount of channels that we're allotted for our interface. Now I mentioned in our last video that our card, our Thunderbolt 3 PCIe card actually allows up to 256 channels, unless you're like me and own the Matrix Studio, which only allows up to 64 channels of audio via Thunderbolt for some reason. Not that it's really an issue, it's not that big of a deal, but if you're working with Dolby Atmos and you're wanting to use it, you're probably gonna wanna have to use Dante Virtual Sound Card. Now, the reason I got this Thunderbolt card in the first place was for recording. So for now, I'm just going to leave it to 16 channels. And as far as I know, you don't have to do anything else aside from that. So I believe this number adjusts what shows up in the audio MIDI setup. So I'm going to open that up. I'm going to scroll down. We should see. Dolby Matrix Studio right here. So if I switch that to 64 channels, it will correlate to the audio MIDI setup in the core audio device settings. I'm gonna close out of this. I'm gonna switch it back to 16 channels. No confirmation button needed. I'm gonna close out of this. So whenever you're using something like Thunderbolt and Dante Virtual Sound Card and all these different things, it's one thing to keep in mind if you're wanting to play back Dolby Atmos content from let's say Apple Music, and specifically Apple Music, whenever I'm doing anything that's strictly computer audio, it's not running anything between my DAW and my speakers, I like to use Dante Virtual Sound Card, which means anything that's coming out of my computer, let's say Apple Music and Atmos for Apple Music, the 7.1.4 render, or if I'm playing back a YouTube video, it's all one individual sound card. I don't have to worry about it being different. Now, if I'm using my DAW and sending audio in and out from other audio interfaces, I like to use the Thunderbolt card. And it actually allows me to switch between different devices and what I do and don't want muted or if I want multiple sources coming in from the same time. It's just cool to play around with. It, the, there's a lot of options with the, the amount of I.O. that's included with this Matrix Studio device. But also keep in mind that if you're playing back in Apple Music that for some reason Mac OS only allows for 16 channel audio interfaces to play back in Apple's true spatial audio. If it's anything like a 32 channel interface or a, a 64 channel like what we had seen in our core audio setup for the Thunderbolt card, it's not going to play back properly or at all in spatial audio. It's just going to play lossless or it's going to play a binauralization in your speakers of what it's kind of supposed to sound like. I'd, I'm going to go into detail about virtualization for speakers and binauralization for headphones in a totally different video. If that's something you'd be interested in, I highly recommend subscribing to the channel. It's really cool information and it's a lot of stuff that's not out and about into the Atmos world publicly. Now, if you're not too familiar with the Dadman software and you wanna get started and kinda of get a tour of what everything does and why everything does what it does, I highly recommend checking out this video where I give an in-depth guide tour of the software. I hope to see you guys there. See you in the next video.